and we created a, a $5.6 trillion surplus in the year 2000. When Al Gore ran for president, there was a $5.6 trillion surplus. When George Bush became president, there was a $5.6 trillion surplus. And against our advice, many of us, he came in with his tax cut for the wealthiest Americans. I'm all for a tax cut for the middle class and for working poor. But the wealthiest did not need it and didn't ask for it. And they got the lion's share of that tax cut. With no guarantee that they even invest that money in the United States of America. You give a rich person a whole bunch of money, they can put it in a portfolio and it goes to China and it goes to Europe, it goes to high tech anywhere. And this year we have a $250 billion deficit. We, Democrats, won the Congress in 2006 thanks to the anger of the American people that we needed change. You know what we did? We put pay as you go in place. So everything we're spending today, folks, requires an offset. You can't spend money on Quincy if you don't find where it's going to come from somewhere else. But there's no offset in the stimulus. Correct, because we can't do that and stimulate the economy at the same time. But the biggest single fear today and the biggest instability in the economy is the foreclosure problem and the real estate market. I was down in Brockton the other day, and you know the mayor's got uh, 10, uh, he's got uh, 1,200 uh, foreclosures. He's already done 400 of them. He's got another 800 staring him in the face, and I met with a lot of the housing people down there um, and listened to their, their issues about this. And you know, the minute you have those foreclosures in the neighborhood, you, you have houses that are locked up and closed, you have more work for the police, you have vandalism, you have, you know, you lose your, your property values, you lose your tax base, you lose your convenience store expenditures, your gas station expenditures, everything goes down. Fifty percent of the bad loans came from ten lenders, most of whom are now out of business. And the question is, is there any liability and can you go after them in any way? The people into a home who on the face of it can't get credit. That's why it's called subprime. Subprime doesn't mean you're getting a subprime loan. Subprime means they are not prime purchasers. It's a term that, that means you are less than credit worthy. So they knowingly put less than credit worthy people into this and went out and sold this. That's crazy. I just, I get really angry about it. I think that that's, it's just wrong to do that. I stopped eating a lot of fish, literally, about three months ago, because I was tested for mercury. And, and my mercury levels were sky high, way above what the EPA level says it ought to be. That's because I love soup. I eat like crazy. I've stopped. So I think we have deep concerns about what's happening to the ecosystem, what's happening to our fish. The levels of mercury and the levels of pollution in the oceans the, the deterioration of certain fisheries, almost every major fishery is an extremist in the world. And the problem is, I've heard these arguments for 24 years, uh, I've been working at this, and I'm very sympathetic to a lot of the fishermen who, who, are, who are correct in that there isn't always adequate science. And sometimes the fishermen are forced into a particular regimen that doesn't have a sufficient reference base of what's really happened to the stock and they go out as captains and they see it personally and then some regulation comes in that, is, that they feel does not have a relationship to their experience. I'm sympathetic to that. The problem is we've tried to get additional money for the science, additional money for the monitoring, uh, and, 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 and this is for the National Marine Fisheries Service, and we haven't been able to get it. So, so we kind of cut off, you know, we, 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 we hurt our own goal because we don't create the credibility with the fishermen. And four years ago, we were one year away from the start of the war in Iraq. One year ago, the president was at 50% of the polls. He's in 23 or something today. You know, four years ago, we were, we were in a country that was doing well economically. They were not. I mean, timing is everything in politics. Uh, you know, it's amazing I came as close as I did to a wartime president who was doing what he was doing. We almost won. Uh, and I'm proud of that. And I won 10 million more votes than Bill Clinton did. I won 8 million more than Al Gore. People said if you win 5 million more, you're going to get elected. Well, we won 8. I also won the highest level of the youth vote in history. 
So we turned on young people. We got young people excited and interested. A lot of them are working in the campaign today, and I'm excited about that.